I'd like to talk today about being in the miracle versus simply ideas of gratitude. Being in the miracle is not just making a list of things that you're grateful for, it's being aware of what's true, what's real, capital R, real in your life and what's not. And rather than just simply counting your blessings, which in and of itself is an absolutely wonderful thing to be doing, what you're being asked to do is come into a miracle state of mind, which will see you through all the undoing and all the shifts from what your personality seems to know and love. And fears will bring sacrifice by following this path of awakening. So when you look upon what used to be a gratitude list, what you're really doing is orientating yourself to what is true. So becoming miracle minded, you become aware of everything that is for you and rapidly coming towards you, giving of itself to you and supporting this experience of being Christ. Many of the things that would be on your miracle minded list don't look like things you should be grateful for. When you're in a miracle mindset, you become grateful for those that exit your life. When you're in a miracle mindset, you become grateful for the awareness that something is not the direction for you by the doors shutting in your face. When you're in a miracle mindset, you feel grateful for every little subtle prompt and nuance that shows you who you are because that's where your treasure is. And so it's a completely different mindset from this abundant thinking. And yet it allows all the abundance that's in your awareness and for you, that doesn't come with any reciprocity to be freely received by you. And that's the important thing too, because certain avenues of support that perhaps were there before, but were filled with reciprocity die away. That does not mean you will not be supported. Everything you need for awakening will be freely given. And that also includes everything you seem to need as you go through your day. This is not a pathway of sacrifice or lack. It's not one of asceticism. And so it's important to start to come into an appreciation of what's truly needed in the moment. Sometimes you need more hours at work so you can pay bigger bills. And sometimes you need less hours at work and a simpler life and to cook your own meals or bring brown paper bag lunches so that you don't have to spend as many hours toiling at a job you do not enjoy. And so coming into this miracle mindset, aware that everything is simply an aspect of your mind coming towards you to show you what you think, believe and desire and giving you yet again another opportunity to change your mind about it, you become empowered and miraculous and miracle minded. So you can see why counting your blessings is a wonderful thing to do and being grateful for things. But if you're still grateful just for things, then things can seem to disappear. And you won't be aware that other things that you never thought you needed have been given instead. So anytime you decide on the form of the outcome, you lose the purpose. That's what it says in A Course in Miracles. It's epidemic in our mindset. It's epidemic in our desire every day to be as good as we can be, the best that we can be, to rise up from the flames, to rebuild, to recreate ourselves again and again. And someone today asked me about that, about, you know, so then the spirit builds you up. And I said, actually, no, everything just burns down and then is gone. What's left is what was always there and was always true. There's nothing to rebuild or build up. And that might seem suddenly slightly disappointing or disheartening in some way that you don't get to build up again. But if you are already everything that is and all magnitude, what is there to create? What is there to build upon? What you're invited to do in a miracle mindset is then to radiate that miracle mindset that new state of mind, that certainty of purpose, that certainty of being who you are, and that there is nothing that can affect you. You're a victim of nothing and no one. That's a miracle mindset. And when you get absolutely deluged with attack thoughts, it's really helpful to get very centered and go through exactly what's true and what's not especially when it comes to beliefs and desires. You may notice that you have a belief 
that is waning but is still there but you want to be very honorable and remember the power of that belief until it's fully questioned and gone and you want to look then to the desire that's there and there's highly likely that there's a conflicting desire also in place and so you don't want to be fighting yourself you just want to notice that you are at odds with your own best interests like i really would love to be going out and doing something right now but i'm actually quite tired and so what is true? If you used to be extremely active, there could be part of yourself going, what's happening? What's happened to my life? I used to do so much. But that doesn't mean you were happy. Then we're coming into a state where there's a constant reorientation to simply what's true and spaciousness to relax into letting go of what's not and the scrambling desire to have it long past your true desire to even have it anymore you'll find you're still at the tail end taste of everybody says it's great we should have it because and if you settle in you go but what would you really like it could be very different on a daily basis so that's the invitation today to get very still and very quiet and find out where your heart's desire truly lies.